Hey, welcome to the Love Thy Neighbor Podcast Network. I'm your host, Anthony Wilson, and I want to jump into a subject that I've been teaching on at my church, and uh, it's something I've been studying for a while, and I have been thoroughly, <clears throat> thoroughly, thoroughly, uh, I want to use the term disappointed in some of the teachings of the mainstream pastors and teachers, especially those with large followings on the subject of strongholds. Now, for some of you, you're familiar with the term stronghold. Um, Some of you are not familiar with that term. And here's what I want to say. Uh, The reason why I have been disappointed with the teachings of big time preachers, I mean, from Charles Stanley to Dr. Eric Mason to, um, uh, I mean, the, the, the list goes on. Uh, just thinking about uh, people who have taught on strongholds that are mainstream, that are uh, YouTube giants, um, and the fact that they ignore, totally ignore the historical in the literary context of what the Apostle Paul is referring to, and they impose a meistic um, 21st century view on the text. And some of these people I know have been through seminary. I know they have a strong concordance. They have access to the original Greek and the original Hebrew, and they could very easily go and look these words up and wrestle with the text and look at the historical evidence. What was Paul going through? What were the circumstances? What was Paul looking at when he said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What was he looking at in second Corinthians chapter 10? Uh, verses four and five. What was his world at the time? And, and, and you know, I, I struggle with it. You know, I, I really struggle with it. Um, and so before I get into teaching on it, please make sure that you like this video, hit the bell so you can get notifications when I post videos. If you're listening to this on podcast, please subscribe. Uh, please connect um, in some way, shape, or form. Make sure that you are getting these podcasts when they post. Um, Thank you, those that are helping out with supporting us. Uh, Thank you. We are full-time ministry, so all of your support is amazing. We are so, so very honored and humbled uh, that you would support this podcast. Um, And those that aren't supporting, you can check out the links find out how to support, you can go to uh, anchor.fm slash uh, anthony-wilson slash support. Um, That's anchor.fm slash anthony-wilson slash support. You can go to cash app, dollar sign, uh, A. Wilson 2273, uh, A. Wilson 2273 dollar sign. Uh, And whichever way you decide that you want to support, please do that. Um, as we get into this particular episode, um, biblical strongholds, strongholds from a biblical perspective, I almost want to say strongholds from Paul's perspective. Um, there is a lot to unpack. And so this is going to be part one. I'm just going to set this thing up. I'm going to give you the framework of what it is that the apostle Paul is talking about as it relates to what people are suggesting that strongholds are today. So if you've never heard of strongholds, this is all going to be new to you. If you have heard of it, um, you're probably thinking that strongholds are some type of uh, sin or habit or addictive behavior that you cannot shake free from. So that's one idea is that, you know, um, maybe you have a stronghold of sexual sin or You have a stronghold of smoking cigarettes and we've got to pray this special prayer to break the stronghold. Um, 
in other terminology, stronghold is a demonic entity that is over a region or an area, um, which has some truth to it. And, and we'll get into that. Uh, but people believe that a stronghold is something over your family. It's kind of akin to a generational curse or a soul tie um, that this thing is over your family and we got to break this stronghold over your family. Or you're connected to a person who has a stronghold on you and you can't get free. That's where soul ties, the belief of soul ties comes in, that you can't get free because you're under a stronghold. Yeah, it's either a spiritual stronghold that someone is manipulating you. You can't get free. They've used witchcraft on you or it's a relational stronghold that you, you can't get away from this person, even though that they are abusive to you. They're horrible to you, but you can't get away because you have a stronghold. I'm going to tell you how people came to that conclusion. I do not know, especially if they were reading the Bible. Now, if people were just saying stuff, if people were just talking, <laughs> then, yeah, I guess you can come to the conclusion of a stronghold being one of those various things or all of those various things. I'm just going to read from the Apostle Paul's words in Second Corinthians, chapter 10, uh, verses three uh, through five. And here's what it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to. To the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul wrote first and second Corinthians uh, pretty much back to back. Um, roughly the late date is 57 AD. The early date is somewhere between 51 and 54 AD. Um, but he wrote them back to back <clears throat> and he wrote these books right after the book of, 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 uh, Galatians, which is his oldest and earliest book. And so Corinthians, um, is a book, uh, that was written probably on Paul's third missionary journey. Um, and he went on a journey to a place called Achaia. And in Achaia um, is the city of Corinth, uh, Centuria, and Sparta. Uh, these are the places in Achaia. And Paul is writing uh, 2 Corinthians to defend his apostleship. There are people who are angry at Paul because they don't like his message. They don't like his methods. Uh, they don't like his mannerisms. They don't like Paul and they don't like what he's preaching. And there's two huge um, belief systems that are found in uh, Corinth. One of them is the Jews who still want to keep the law. And the other one is the worship of idols. And so this is the backdrop of what Paul is looking at. When he says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Paul, um, if you look at Acts chapter 18, comes into Corinth after leaving Athens uh, and he comes into Corinth and he begins to preach the gospel there. And the same type of adversity and persecution and violence that he has faced everywhere else he faces in Corinth. Because there are Jews that believe that Paul's teaching is contrary to the law of Moses. Now, a stronghold, a stronghold, stronghold in the Greek or to Roma, 3794 in your Strong's Concordance, the 3794, or to Roma, is a fortress, a strong defense, used only in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And it is used for a heavily fortified containment. It is a metaphor for a false argument. So 
this false argument is metaphorically seen as a fortress that is difficult to penetrate. And Paul says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds are heavily fortified containments. They are a false argument. Metaphorically, he puts these two together. And not only are they a, a, a heavily fortified containment, but they are a safe place for the people who have this false argument. This is a safe structure. Now, listen to me. The Jews keeping of the law was their safety net. When Paul would preach salvation in Christ, Paul is making them uncomfortable. He is taking away from them the, the, their safety net. They have the market cornered by keeping the law. They have everybody uh, under their power, within their power structure, because at that time there were synagogues all over the place. As a matter of fact, in, in Acts chapter 18, there are multiple synagogues that Paul goes to because these synagogues are set up everywhere. And they're set up everywhere because the law and keeping the law, keeping the Sabbath, keeping the feast days, keeping, was uh, cemented into the religious, social, and cultural um, uh, uh, consciousness of everyone there. And so this is the fortified containment. This is the heavily fortified containment that he's going up against. It is the belief that only by keeping the law can you be saved. And they were willing to beat and hurt people, even kill people in order to maintain the hold that they had on their region. And so Paul would encounter this fortress, this 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 defense, this strong defense almost everywhere he would go. And so the law, the keeping of the law was his primarily primary uh, opposition. The second major opposition that you find in Corinth and you find in Paul's journeys is the worship of idols. Now, this belief system is a belief system based upon they had a sacrificial system where they offered meat to idols that they had days and months and seasons and times that they offered up sacrifices. And this was their belief system. And so when Paul came in preaching Jesus as 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 God, Jesus as the only way. These people who believed in multiple gods and worship of multiple idols that were created, this now, Paul is coming against another heavily fortified containment. This is a, face, a safe place for them because they've been believing this and serving this for decades, for millennia. And so you have the law and you have idolatry. And these things are st- Stooped and steeped and saturated in the social, religious, and cultural uh, consciousness of the people that he's preaching to. And then what they would do, so, so you have the stronghold, which is that belief system, but then you have the arguments that justify the values of that belief system. The arguments, this is G3053. Uh, logismos, a reasoning such as is hostile to the Christian faith. It is the bottom line reasoning that reflects someone's value system. Again, 3053 in your strongs, logismos. This is a hostile reasoning towards the Christian faith. And it is used in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verses 4 and 5. The bottom line reasoning. And so, the, so so their arguments would support and justify the keeping of the law or the maintaining of the idolatrous systems that were uh, in Corinth and some of the other uh, uh, places that Paul visited. Are you hearing me? I'm trying to lay the groundwork as we talk about this. And so you, you have uh, uh, the, the stronghold of 
keeping the law and you have the stronghold of idolatry. You have the arguments that support and justify the keeping of the law and support and justify the continuation of offering meat to idols and sacrificing to idols and worshiping various and multiple gods. Okay. Then you have an every high thing. High thing, 53.13. Hoopsoma, a barrier, a rampart, uh, specifically in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 10, verse 5, an elevated structure. And so if you understand what a rampart is or a bulwark, these are barriers meant to keep someone out and protect you while you attack other people. And so it, it's a, it, it's, it can be an elevated wall that you, from behind that wall, you fire arrows or you launch uh, 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 attacks on people, but it keeps you safe behind your wall. And so this high thing, these high things are, are, are the beliefs that allow these people to stay fortified and stay protected. Um, it's basically their lifestyle. It makes it an opposition to hearing the knowledge of God. And the true knowledge of God is through Jesus Christ, because that's what Paul was preaching. Now, this is the, the, the biblical, historical, and literary context by which Paul is trying to communicate to his listeners. My question is, how do we turn it into, oh, you got a stronghold of smoking cigarettes? What? How did we get there? Well, it's because there uh, are a lot of people who won't do the due diligence to really wrestle and understand and study to show themselves approved uh, a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Really study the context, the historical context. What was Paul looking at? The literary context, the words that he's using. What does he mean when he says these words? Not what do we want to make them mean in order to appease and to relate to people nowadays. Because of that, we're missing true revelation and understanding of what the word of God is teaching. And so let me summarize this. Let me summarize this. Let me recap this. Uh, strongholds, uh, arguments, and high things are interconnected, but they are not synonyms for each other. The stronghold, 3794, is the heavily fortified containment or the belief system, the false argument which is a system of belief, i.e. the law, keeping of the law, or idol worship. I can throw in a third one. Uh, there was a stronghold, that, and, and I don't want to get into that one yet, so I won't throw that one in there yet. We'll just talk about the law and idol worship because that's what was in Corinth, right? And so you have the fortified containment, which is the system of belief that this false system of belief, this argument for this false system of belief. This is a fortified containment. Now the term arguments, 3053, justifies the need and the existence for this original false system of belief, this false argument about believing a certain way. And thirdly, and the high things, 5313, they act as a barrier to protect the false arguments that justify this false system of belief. Okay? And so the Apostle Paul here is looking at the keeping of the law and the worshiping of idols, these uh, very intricate systems that are religious, cultural, and social. They are the, the, the how they relate to God and worship. 
They are how they connect with each other. They are socially binding and they are cultural. They, they, they give them a cultural identity. And when Paul comes in and begins to preach Jesus and the kingdom of God and, 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 and salvation through Jesus Christ, he is by 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 mission uh, 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 hitting a battering ram up against a barrier. And he is trying to break through and break in and rescue those who will hear the gospel. Now, in Corinth, most of the people there were adversaries. They gathered together. They took Paul to the judgment seat and they tried to have Paul beat or put in prison. But a man named Galileo, who was the proconsul at the time, refused to do it. There were a few people, Titus Justus, which we know as Titus, Crispus, and a man named Gaius, Sothanius, who was a ruler of one of the synagogues. These individuals came to know the gospel and believe in Jesus through Paul's preaching. But the predominant group of people were stuck in this stronghold. Now, Understanding that we have to rethink how we're talking about strongholds, because I think it's more difficult to discern the stronghold today because we first have to really, really understand what Paul was looking at, what Paul was facing as he was preaching the gospel from place to place. He was encountering these false arguments that were fortified, heavily fortified containments. And these false argument arguments were reasonings or belief systems that he was coming against. Not just negative mindsets that uh, I'll, 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 I'll never be able to be anything in life. Uh, I'll never have a husband. Uh, I'll never have kids. Let's break that stronghold over your life uh, uh, of depression. And th 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 that, th that's not what he was talking about. And for us to minimize it and reduce it and morph it into those things, then we miss that Paul's primary objective was to preach the gospel. And that was the knowledge of God that he is talking about, the intimate gnosis of God. 1108 in your Strong's knowledge is gnosis, good gnosis, if you want, because it's a G-N-O-S-I-S. But it's pronounced gnosis and, 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 and Paul's wanted people to know God intimately. And the only way they could is through Christ. That's why Apostle Paul said things like that. I might know him. In the fellowship of his suffering and the power of his resurrection, uh, that Paul really wanted to know him and he wanted other people to know him. He said things like uh, that, that I labor, that Christ may be formed in you. He wanted people to really know God. The knowledge of God was through Christ. But because of these strongholds, these heavily fortified containments, people could not progress to come to know God. They could not get to know God. Because they were blockaded, barricaded, and captive. And that's why Paul says that I have to take every thought captive. That these beliefs, these reasonings, these imaginations, these I ideologies in their mind had to bring him into the obedience of Christ because Christ was the target. And that tells you why there was such opposition when you're trying to tell people who have multiple gods that there's only one God who have multiple ways to accomplish wisdom and healing and all this kind of stuff and say, no, there's only one way. And it's through Christ that you're coming up against a stronghold when you're telling people that you no longer have to follow the law and be circumcised and observe these days that you can have freedom in Christ, that you can live for God by, through faith in Christ by hearing the word of God, hearing the gospel, obeying the gospel, and you are justified by faith, not of your works. There were people who were outraged by this. That was the stronghold. 
I'm hoping I'm, I'm helping you to understand that the strongholds that we talk about today, I don't want to minimize them because they may be personal struggles, but they're not strongholds. And there's a difference between a personal struggle and a stronghold. Where if you're preaching the gospel and you come into a town and there is a already uh, a previous setup belief system set up that now you've got to tear it down in order to reach people. That's a stronghold. That's a stronghold. And so what is a stronghold? A stronghold is a heavily fortified containment. And this is a metaphor for the false argument of Salvation through keeping the law or there's not just one God. There's a pantheon of gods and we can worship whatever God we want. These are the the the, the, the false arguments, the heavily fortified containment. And then they have the arguments that justify and support the existence and the need for these false arguments, these strongholds. And then you have high things that act as barriers that keep people in, uh, protected behind their barriers and won't let you penetrate with the gospel. But Paul says that the weapons of our warfare are, are mighty in God for the pulling down. And he did. He was able to penetrate these regions with the gospel. And that's our goal. with The Love Thy Neighbor podcast network. We want to penetrate regions with the word of God with solid biblical teaching. Please leave your comments, your questions, your concerns uh, down uh, in, in the in the comment section. If you are on Spotify, please uh, respond um, as we ask if these uh, episodes are beneficial. Remember, thank you for listening. God bless you. I pray that this stirs you up. Please shoot me your questions. I, if you're listening to this, you got to have some questions. You got to be thinking, what? what let, let me clarify some things. Please reach out to me. Remember, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Love Thy Neighbor Podcast Network. We'll be coming back with more great content like this. God bless you.